Let f be a finite field. Prove that f has p of the m elements, where p is a prime, and m is greater than zero. Recall what it means for f to be a field. First, f is a commutative ring. That means we have an addition and a multiplication, which are compatible. Here we're assuming the multiplication is commutative. Then, we're going to assume that we have a multiplicative identity, we'll call it one bar, which is not equal to our additive identity, zero. Finally, to be a field, we're going to assume for each non-zero x, there's a multiplicative inverse. Now, to get a handle on the number of elements in f, we want to get a handle on the characteristic of f. To start, we note f is going to be an abelian group under addition. So I want to consider the cyclic subgroup generated by one bar. Since our group's finite, the subgroup, which we'll call h, is also going to be finite. So that's going to mean there's going to be some smallest integer n, such so if I add one bar to itself n times, we get zero, the additive identity. Now, the claim is going to be that n is a prime number p. So to see this, suppose we can factor n. So suppose I write n as k times l. k and l are going to be between 1 and n. I'm going to assume that k bar and l bar, the images of k and l in our field, are both non-zero. Okay, so k bar is just taking one bar, adding it to itself k times, likewise for l bar. Okay, neither of these can be equal to zero. Okay, otherwise they would have to be bigger than our n, since n is the smallest that gets us to zero. Now, if I take k bar times l bar, well, what are we going to get? If you do your bookkeeping here, we're just going to get that we're taking one bar, adding it to itself n times, so we're going to get zero. So k bar times l bar is going to give me zero. If I apply k bar inverse to both sides, I get l bar equals zero, and that gives me a contradiction. So that means we couldn't factor n in the first place, which means it's going to be a prime number. Let's show that the characteristic of our field is p. So for a finite field, the characteristic is the smallest positive integer p, such that if we take any x, add it to itself p times, we get zero. Now, another way to say that, x is not equal to zero, then the order of x under addition is equal to p. So, take x, add it to itself p times, I could factor out an x, it's going to leave me with x times one bar plus itself p times, and we know that that's equal to zero. So we get a zero out, that means order of x under addition is going to divide p. Since p is a prime, that means the order is equal to 1 or p. The only element that can have order 1 is the identity element 0. So if x is not equal to 0, then the order of x under addition is p, and that's what we want. Now, we have two ways we can finish. First way, we'll pull out the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups. Now, under addition, f is a finite abelian group. So by our fundamental theorem, we can write f as being isomorphic to a finite product of finite cyclic groups. To organize, the way we could set up the order for each factor, okay, so this will be sequence of integers, n sub i. n sub 1 is going to be bigger than 1. Then each n sub i is going to divide n sub i plus 1. Now, in our case, there's not going to be much we can do with these factors. For our elements, the orders are either 1 or p, which means the only factors that I can have are going to be z mod p. If I have m factors, that means the number of elements that we have in our field is going to be p to the n. Okay, it's worth noting, if I have any field, we have at least two elements, 0 and 1 bar, and they're not equal. Another way to finish, you could use linear algebra. So if you note, okay, our subgroup H okay, is going to be isomorphic to Z mod P. And Z mod P carries more than just a group structure. It actually carries a field structure. So you can show that H is going to be a subfield of F. And then 
You can go through your vector space properties to show that F is going to be a vector space over H. Now, because F has finitely many elements, F is going to be a finite dimensional vector space over H. So once I choose a basis, we could set up a vector space isomorphism between F and a product of Z mod P's. So if I have M factors here, then the order of F is going to be P to the M, which agrees with the other method. And if you note, our final answer here looks a lot like what we would get from fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups.